The Great Grid Upgrade. You might have seen the adverts or heard me talk about it in previous videos and comments as a big part of the solution to reduce curtailment of wind energy and make the grid more resilient as we move from centralised generation in the Midlands to more distributed generation and interconnection on the edges of the country. Reducing curtailment means we better use the energy we already generate, reducing our reliance on gas peak at plants to fill in the gaps and should in the long term bring bills down and make the grid better connected and ready for electrification as it's estimated we'll need anywhere up to three times the amount of energy we use now, today, if we want to electrify more things like all the trains, cars, heating and industrial processes we rely on for a modern world. The Great Grid Upgrade is just National Grid's branding of the projects, but if we take a step back they're all generally part of Ofgem's ASTI programme. And no, that's not a really bad Greg's you had once. Or Accelerated Strategic Transmission Investment. This guidance document from 2023 lists the projects in Appendix 1 and the transmission owners responsible, which including National Grid or Scottish Power Transmission or SPT and Scottish Hydroelectric Transmission or SHET. And no, that wasn't me saying something naughty in a Scottish accent. If you've not heard of SPT or SHET before, that's because they generally go by their parent company's names, SSEN or Scottish and Southern Electricity Networks and SPT is a subsidiary of Scottish Power Energy Networks or SPEN. Now ASTI is just one of the frameworks helping to deliver these projects and there's other works going on outside of that as part of the Rio T2 and T3 which are the plans for how each of the transmission owners plan to spend their money for set periods with T2 ending in 2026 and T3 taking over. These plans are all public and at the moment are dominated by new infrastructure building more in the next five years than we have in the last 70 odd years. I'll cover that in a bit more in my History of the Grid video coming in December, so remember to get subscribed for that. So now let's dig into the projects and give you a better idea of what's going on, where and why. The projects I'll cover today mostly follow ASTI and the holistic network design it was based on, produced by the National Energy System Operator or NISO, which is this funky map with all the lines on it. As always, check the chapters on the YouTube player if you want to focus on specific projects or come along for the ride as I go through them from north to south. It's worth mentioning at this point that we split projects up between offshore and onshore, with offshore being your subsea cables, usually H3DC, and connecting up offshore wind farms, with onshore projects typically being overhead lines, which can be new lines, or upgrading old ones with additional conductors, or higher voltages, as well as some cable projects like tunnels. Projects can also be described as radial, where they're point to point, and like individual projects, or they can be meshed designs which incorporate more than one project or location and connect them all up like a web to lower costs. As you can see from the two images, the radial design results in more cables coming onto land causing more disruption for landowners compared to consolidating the assets offshore and bringing them on in one cable. But that can be challenging depending on who owns the various projects. So without further ado, Let's go top to bottom through the list of projects and explain them as we go, starting with Scotland, then moving on to England and Wales. So first off, BBNC is the Bewley to Black Hillock 400kV new double circuit, which should add up to 8 gigawatts of capacity from the north of Scotland across towards Aberdeen. BPNC continues this from Black Hillock to Peterhead, where most of the EGL projects begin to send power down south to England. So that's why that's significant. For anyone wondering, Hillock means hill. BDUP upgrades the Bewley to Denny lines from 275kV to 400kV, which will drastically increase the amount of power they can transfer. That's again taking that northern Scotland wind energy down to Denny near Edinburgh. BLN4 is the Bewley to Loch Bewey 400kV reinforcement works. Loch Bewey is currently a 275kV site, so it's been upgraded to 400kV and supports the previously mentioned projects to bring Scottish wind power all the way down from Spittal in the north, down south, which is the SLU4 project. Following the list in order is going out the window now, so I'll continue with Scottish projects with DWNO, which is the Denny to Wishaw 400 kV reinforcement. There's a load of work that's going into this project and you can follow along on the website here, but at its core, there'll be a new 275 kV 400 kV double circuit and they can estimate a power increase of one gigawatt to flow from Scotland's central belt down towards England. TKUP is another load of reinforcement between Kintor and Teeling, among other works in Aberdeenshire, to strengthen the new east coast connections. That just about does it for onshore in Scotland. 
now for offshore projects. So next I'll start with Western Isles, which is a HVDC connection from Arnish to Bewley, bringing 1.8 gigawatts of green power from the Isle of Lewis into Scotland. The fact that it's 1.8 gigawatts tells me immediately that it'll be bipole, meaning two circuits of HVDC, meaning four cables total, as you have a positive and negative. Technology wise, it look like most other converter stations, with two big buildings and a control building. Dedicated HVDC video coming soon. Now going top to bottom geographically for the remaining projects. PSDC is the Spittle to Peterhead HVDC reinforcement, which is another offshore HVDC bipole connection running at 525 kV and 2 gigawatts, bypassing all that onshore infrastructure to bring power down the east coast. And finally, to finish off Scotland for now, are the Eastern Greenlink projects. There's five of them for now, but it's a repeatable framework, so there could be more in future. All of these are offshore HVDC projects, where AGL 1 and 4 are Scottish power projects, going from Torness and Fife respectively, to Hawthorne Pit in the northeast of England and Walpole. These are EDC2 and TGDC. EGL2, which I've worked on for over 18 months, as well as EGL3 and 5, are SSEN projects. Not much is known about 5 at the moment, but 2 and 3 go from Peterhead, making use of all the previous works mentioned, to bring around 2 gigawatts each of clean power down to Drax in East Yorkshire, near Hull and Walpole again respectively. This is massive for bypassing all of the onshore constraints, but notably each link is 2 gigawatts or less. Compared to overhead lines that can be up to 8 gigawatts and are much simpler and cheaper to install. The benefits of HVDC only really become apparent at these long distances, and I'm going to explore that more for East Anglia specifically in a dedicated video. These projects are E4D3 and E4L5. It's also worth noting that all of these upgrades and new projects are bi-directional, meaning both sides can benefit with a stronger grid connection, providing voltage support and synthetic inertia where we use HVDC and giving us more flexibility with the network so we have more options when maintaining our existing aging assets. Right now, because of the demand on the network, it's really hard to get an outage to turn something off to work on it. Most of these projects mentioned so far are due to go into service between 2028 and 2031. That covers all the projects for Scotland in Annex 1, at the time of writing, and there will be other projects outside of this work, but now to take a look at the rest of ASTI, the Great Grid Upgrade, and the Great Grid Partnership Works. Starting with AENC and ATNC, which are the Norwich to Tilbury overhead line projects. The first being North, which goes from Norwich main substation to Bramford, then ATNC takes it from Bramford to Tilbury. This is a 400 kV new double circuit, with the aim to bring all that wind energy in East Anglia southward. There's a load of wind farms connecting into Walpole, Necton and Norwich, and future projects like AGL 3 and 4, so this will help bring all that power east and south. These are both due to go into service around 2031. BTNO is the Bramford to Twinstead new 400 kV double circuit, further supporting offshore connections in the East Anglia region, bringing more of that wind and potentially nuclear power inland. As people seem to forget that in the UK, we build nuclear on the coast, so any improvements to the extremities of the grid will aid that cause as well, not just wind. And Sizewell is also out this way. Moving back up to Yorkshire, we have CGNC, which is a new 400 kV double circuit between Craigie Beck and South Humber, easing constraints on the current Humber circuits, bringing in all the new wind power from the likes of Dogger Bank and Hornsea to the rest of the network, which are the three biggest offshore wind farms in the world at the time of this video. Sticking with Yorkshire for a minute, we have GWNC, a new 400 kV double circuit from South Humber to South Lincolnshire. This is the Grimsby to Walpole overhead line project that Lincolnshire residents aren't happy about, as it passes through the Walds and near Skegness. Again, this is bringing all that wind power from the east coast down south to feed the Midlands and East Anglia. All the projects so far on this list are creating a great big reinforcement up and down the east coast, which will be massive for making sure our grid can keep meeting our demands in future as we electrify more and more things. Bearing in mind that East Midlands Railway still use diesel locomotives, but more on that another time when I cover rail electrification and then rant about British Rail in another video. Lingering in the Midlands for a bit, EDEU is a Brinsworth to Chesterfield, Chesterfield to High Marnham 400kV upgrades with three new 400kV substations. The existing lines are 275kV and we need to build a new 400kV at each end of these locations. EDN2 is the new Chesterfield to Ratcliffe on Saw 400kV double circuit to increase capacity across the Midlands, now that Ratcliffe on Saw coal power plant has been retired. 
As mentioned in my last video on the IB Run Blackout, Niso has identified voltage support needs across the Midlands. Now that coal is gone, so this will give us more flexibility to add to the network here. While we're here, I'll shout out to the provisional project LRN4 or WMEL, which is a combination of projects to build new substations at Western Marsh between the existing Spalding, Bicker Fen and Walpole substations in southern Lincolnshire to a new substation north of Market Harbour in eastern Leicestershire and some reconduction work on the existing Market Harbour to Grendon circuits. I live and work in these areas so it would be much needed relief for having new substations in the area to add capacity to the network as after all the existing work finishes most of the substations will be full to capacity again for connections. Now working clockwise around the UK on the east coast between Suffolk and Kent we have SCD1 or Sea Link, which is another offshore HVDC link bringing the East Anglia wind directly into the Thames estuary to feed London and the South East. Again to reiterate, these links are bi-directional, meaning we also share that interconnected power from down south up to the East Midlands this way. Around London we have TKRE, which is a Tilbury to Grain and Tilbury to Kings North upgrades. This upgrades around 27 km of overhead line and adds a new cable tunnel under the Thames River. This also feeds into the TWNC project, which isn't a nasty project, but plans to add a new 400 kV double circuit from Waltham Cross to Wymondley, with massive extensions planned for these substations to accommodate. HWUP is the uprating project for Hackney, Tottenham and Waltham Cross. That'll do for England, and there's more to ASTI, including a lot of proposals for how to connect wind farms, but for the sake of this video, I'll be focusing more on the main transmission network, so over to Hilly Wales. Over here we have PTC1, which is the Pentia to Trasvinus cable replacement, operating circuit 4ZC from 132kV to 400kV. As part of the PTNO works, there's also a new substation at Brankia, new shunt reactor at Trasvinus, extending a cable ceiling end compound and building a new tunnel head house, which is where a cable tunnel comes out of the ground. That'll do for explaining ASTI and the Great Grid upgrade today, and there's a ton of extra development in the NASO holistic design for offshore networks I can dig into another time. Well done if you've made it this far into the video. If you're like me, you're probably exhausted by all the acronyms now, and this isn't even all the work and projects going on. Besides this and projects not mentioned, as well as all the regular maintenance and replacement of the existing network that needs to be done, which is why there's a massive shortage of engineers and competent people to do all this work in a short window. If you'd like to work on these projects or explore working in this field, then check out movingthegridforward.co.uk, which is a new website shared by all the transmission operators. I started in the industry as an apprentice in 2018, working for an OEM, and it's how I'm able to share all my knowledge with you today. If there's a project I've listed you want me to cover in more detail, drop a comment down below, like, subscribe, and you'll hopefully see me in some of these sites giving you a deeper look into the work that goes on soon. Cheers and take care. Thanks to my patrons, Benedict, Mark, Mr. Bear, Andy, Herring, Andrew, Jack, Lionel, Richard, TJ, Colin, Jay Hamilton, Nils, Tim Small, John Walker, Joe Newman. So this is carrying on from the wildfires video, but this is now the Great Grid upgrade video. Yes, mate. The projects I'll cover today mostly follow BLN4 is the Bewley to Lock. There's a load of pro- It's really hard to get an outage to turn something off to work on it. Which is the Pentia to tr trust Finnard. Oh my God. I'm gonna get shouted at by Welsh people, come on. Traus Vinnif. Traus, Traus Vinnif. Over here we have PTC1, which is the Pentia tr Traus Vinnif. As part of the PTNL works, there's also a new substation at Bryson. Bry... Bryson... Oh, I fucking need that. I need a fucking translator after this. Brankia. As part of the PTNO works, there's also a new substation at Brankia. New chunk. Wrap. Ooh, food. <laughs> 